look here for Simbox down at the press conference to announce Scott Quigg versus John O'Carroll. And I'm delighted to be joined by John O'Carroll himself. How are you doing, John? Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me, mate. Appreciate it. Lovely. So, you've just been announcing you're fighting Scott Quigg. Uh, can I get your immediate thoughts on that fight and Quigg as an opponent? Yeah, Quigg as an opponent. He's, uh, he's a former world champion. He's an experienced fighter. He combined. He's, uh, he's going to be a great fight for me. You know, perfect stepping stone for me in my career. Um, you know what, he still thinks he has some old dog left in the fight, so I just hope he does, you know. Um, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be a very, very interesting fight. And for me, I'm going to be uh, I'm gonna be the best I can possibly be. I'm, I'm showing up to destroy Scott Craig. I'm not showing up just to win this fight. I'm showing up to like, make a statement in this fight. So do you feel like you, you, know, you need to be at your very best to, to deal with someone of Scott Craig's caliber? I always feel like I need to be at my very best, not because of my opponent, but because I want to be my very best. I don't really care about my opponent, to be honest. I don't really look into them too much. I don't study them too much. I just know if I'm the best I can possibly be, then no one else really matters. You know what I mean? So uh, that's the way I... I don't focus on other people and other people's goals and dreams. I just focus on my own and I accomplish them. So you, know, you mentioned that you've been working with um, your former opponent, Seven Farmer, you know, using companies build up to Joe Joe Diaz. Yes. Um, can you just take us through, you know, how it was in camp with with an ex opponent, you know, someone that you, you in your words went to war with, you know, everyone that watched the fight would have seen a great fight. Um, how was it to go back? And, you know, you very friendly with the. With the yeah. Seven farming now. You know, it how was, was it in camp? Do you know what? It was fun. We had a ball over there. He's a very nice man. Uh, I can get on with anyone, you know what I mean? So uh, we were there for business, but at the same time, there was a lot of pleasure there. He was, uh, he was a good good person to be around. He's, all, he's in good humour in camp. He's, uh, it was fun, mate. We had a ball. We actually had a ball out there. I really enjoyed my time, but not only did he help me in training when we were training, he told me some things. But he helped me mentally as well, telling me certain things that I should have been doing, you know. So uh, it was a great experience for myself. So, you know, after being in that position with Seven Farm, you know, which is, is great moving forward for both of you in terms of, like, you know, quality sparring and being able to break down each other's uh, game plan in the previous bout, how would that affect you if moving forward you were to earn a rematch against Seven Farm, you know, considering you've you know, you've spoke to each other in depth about what you do right and what you do wrong. Yes. How do you think that would approach, how that would affect your mindset approaching a possible rematch if that was to occur? Like I said before, I just focus on my own abilities and what I can do. So it wouldn't matter if, if we both know each other now as well. We share the ring many a times, you know what I mean? So um, mentally, physically, I know what he's, I know what Farmer's about, but he's talking about going to 135 pounds now anyway after this fight. Um, so. I, mate, so many the belts can change so quick in this in this boxing game that I don't focus on the champions. I don't focus on anyone really. I just focus on being the best fighter I can possibly be. And uh, I don't think Tevin would ever want to fight me again because he knows what I'm capable of doing, even in training and sparring and that. But it's like we know each other a lot now, so. I just don't know if you'd want that, like, to be honest. So can I get your thoughts on the Farmer-Diaz fight? Like, how do you see that playing out? And what's your I, think Tevin out, I think Tevin outboxes him. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a hard fight. Of course, it's going to be a hard fight because Jojo Diaz, former Olympian, very good fighter, you know. He's uh, he's well up for this fight as well. But I just think I just think Farmer has the um, more boxing brain and he can make it miss a lot more than Jojo. If Jojo Diaz is stiff and tries to bang him out, and comes forward and throws a lot of shots, he might be missing with a lot of those shots, you know. The only way to be farmer is to be very intelligent. You need to be intelligent with your approach on him. You can't just storm forward and throw loads of punches because he makes you miss. I don't, what I done in my first two rounds with Tevin Farmer is what my game plan was for the whole fight, you know. Stalk him, stalk him, let him throw the jab and then commit with him when he's committing his backhand because he drops the, the jab. But that, uh, that didn't go the plan when I got the cut, you know what I mean? We had to change things up and we, we then rushed it and went forward to a counter punch. It was, it was a wrong, we had to switch it up in the middle of it, but it was the wrong thing to do, you know? But I think I almost, I already set out the blueprint to beat him Farmer in, in a way. Okay. So, I just hope Jojo Diaz didn't watch that fight too much, you know what I mean? I, I hope that, I really genuinely do hope Tevin Farmer does the business. Fantastic. So, you know, switching the focus back to this fight with Scott Quigg, you know, you mentioned up on the top table earlier, but you know, the sacrifices you made, the fact that, you know, you, you've not seen your daughter play with, with the toys that you bought over Christmas, you know, and, and things like that, I'm sure, will only fuel the flames in terms of your ambitions, not only in this fight, but moving forward into a big 2020. Yeah, most definitely. Like, the thing is, with confidence, you need, you need the, the way you gain confidence in the first place is through commitment and constantly working on your graft, you know. Uh, I've made so many commitments in this sport that, like, 
it's, it's not always been good on my family and stuff like that, you know? I understand it, my missus understands it, so that's fine. But a two-year-old doesn't understand those things, you know? I've been speaking to her on the phone at times, like in video chat, and uh, she's like, Dad, just come home, and she was crying on the phone to me. I said, babe, I can't, I'm walking, you know? So things like that just gives me that fire. Like, we were supposed to go to bloody Disneyland two days after Christmas, and we didn't because mm. I sacrificed that whole day in order okay. to go to uh, to train with Tevin Farmer, you know what I'm saying? So I've sacrificed many and many a things in order to be the best person that I can possibly be and the best boxer I can possibly be. And uh, I think all those things down the in the long run pay off. Definitely, so you know, like I say, you know, looking at the long run, um, you know, when she's old enough to be able to look back, you know, she'll, she'll see the, the, the big posters and the fact that, you know, her dad did headline at the Manchester Arena, you know, one of the biggest arenas in the world, you know, uh, that, that again must be a, a great source of motivation for yourself. Yeah, most definitely, you know what I mean? I just want I just want my baby to be proud of me, you know? Um, and the thing is, what I'm learning and gaining throughout my boxing experience is, is a lot of respect, a lot of discipline, a lot of, like if, it doesn't matter what job or business you end up deciding to do, but if I can install those, the likes of that into her, you know, sacrifices and dedication, always telling them, like the truth and there's certain little things to the, to the boxing game that I can bring in and, and show her in life in general. Uh, I know she's going to be proud of me regardless and all the things that I've set out to accomplish I've, almost, I've done a lot of those things you know, I've bought a house I've, bought, I've done certain things that I was happy and I'm, I will forever be happy about but at the same time I haven't accomplished that main goal yet and that's winning the world title so it's on the way, it's on the way, it's coming yeah, so you know, um, you mentioned on the top table about uh, Scott Quigg going back to Joe Gallagher mm -hmm. and in your opinion um, or your words, you know, that, that was uh, a sign of weakness. Can you expand on that a little and, and, and what made you think that's well, the he, case? The thing is, if he if he thought in his own head, oh, I have to change trainer now, then that means he had doubt in his own head. Like, I never seen no doctor's report either to his injury, you know, which stopped me from doing all these things, stopped me from going on this holiday with me, baby, because if we had had that fight, I was going on that holiday, you know? So um, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that like, I'm questioning about him. And it's, I don't know if he was actually mentally ready for the fight, physically what, I don't know what the reasons he actually pulled out. No one's seen no doctor's report, you know what I mean? So it is what it is. But at the same time, if you have to change a trainer before such a big fight, I know he's going back to Joe, so Joe knows him. So it's not like he's changing the trainer to go to some, someone completely different. Joe knows him and Joe's a great trainer. I have a lot of respect for the man. Um, I really respect Joe as a trainer. But... For me, I just think, if you left him in the first place, what was the reason you left him in the first place? And then why do you have, feel like you have to come back? It's just a, it's a lot of mental uh, mental battling what he's probably doing with himself. You know what I mean? And that, that to me, is a bit worrying in, in his opinion, like in his, for him, not for me. For me, it just gives me that confidence that he's not sure about himself. And, he's, and he needs, or he wants other people. Like It's only gonna be me and him in there at the end of the day. No trainer, no, no, it's going to be me and him in there, and that's it. And that's why I love boxing so much. It doesn't matter what you have around you or who you have around you. You can have yes people around you all you want, but when you get in that ring, it's just me and you, boy, and then we go to war and see what you actually made up. But uh, I think that's just a bit of mental weakness he has. So, you know, uh, to finally you know, give you the, the chance, uh, for the fans tuning in, what can we expect? Um, and what's your prediction for the fight? Yeah, my prediction for the fight is that you're going to see me play with him all night long, whether it's on the inside or the outside or whatever fight that I decide to create, it's going to be that fight. I'm the one going to set the pace. I'm the younger, fresher man. If I want to stand toe to toe and break him down on the inside, then that's what I'll do. If I want to stand out and box him and box his ears off all night, then that's what I'll do. It's uh, Or maybe both, you know what I mean? I don't know. But I know I'm the younger man, I know I'm the fresher man. And uh, I just think this fight is all in my hands. Whatever I want to do with this fight, and everyone knows I like to be entertaining, so you're going to be entertained. Trust me on that one. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time, gentlemen. Uh, I wish you the very best for March 7th. I'm sure we'll catch up in the future. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, everybody. You.